next? Um, let's take David in Australia. Wow, it is a super international show. David Yay. in Queensland. You're live with Eric and V. What would you like hi, to talk about? Hi, Eric. Hello. Hello. V. Yes, hi. Sorry, there might be a slight lag. So if there's a little bit of a, a wait between when I answer, that's probably what's going on. No worries. We're, we, we've kind of been deal, dealing with it all day. So yeah. you're good, my friend. What would you like to talk about? Um, I wanted to talk about uh, fairness, um, how I think fairness is very important and um, fairness in association with um, how God deals with us. Okay. Okay. I, please elaborate. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I think, yeah. So I think that um, that God is is fair in um, in the way that He deals with us um, in the situation that we're uh, that He's tried to um, have us in in the first place, and also in our final destination. So th there are a couple things that you're wrapping in there. Um, but we want to meet you where you're at. And so I think that we're, I'm, I'm willing to, for the sake of having this argument, put down the whether or not that God exists at all, because I actually don't think that that God is necessarily very fair at all, especially if you, do you believe in heaven and hell? Yes, I do believe in the concepts of heaven and hell. Okay. Um, so what does hell look like? Yeah. To you, because I know different denominations, it looks different. Uh, yes, hell, that's a good question. Um, hell is a one time event um, at the end of time after everyone has had their time in court uh, where people cease to exist, they are annihilated. Okay, so you're an annihilationist. Interesting. Um, why, why do you take that particular interpretation of hell? Because I believe that that is what the Bible teaches, um, for both, uh, hell and also, um, I don't believe that the Bible teaches that body and spirit are two separate things. Ooh. Interesting. So, so what part of you gets tortured in hell? if you don't think body and spirit are two separate things. Cause I mean, we could go to a graveyard and dig somebody up and, you know, find what's left. I'm, I'm confused, but very intrigued. Yes. Yeah, so, um, I would believe that the body is the life support system of the brain and the brain is the seat of the mind. So that once uh, we die, um, the brain ceases, ceases to function, um, therefore we cease to exist. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm with you so far. Where do we get mind or spirit from then? Well, we can talk about spirit and body. Um, we can differentiate or distinguish between the two of them, um, but we can't separate them because um, the mind is a phenomenon of the physical brain. It's the electrical impulses in the brain um, that give us the ability of being self-aware and conscious. So, okay. what so what goes to hell? Um, the entire person, because we can't separate body, body and spirit. If, if the body dies, the spirit you know, our, our mind ceases to exist because our mind depends upon the brain um, functioning correctly. Destroy one part of the brain mm -hmm. and um, we lose that functionality, I think, adequately demonstrates that okay. the mind is a function of the brain. So, so you, you know that, um, like, th there are people whose bodies have rotted away. You know, I mean, Tupac's friends smoked them. Um, how, how do we get that part back? <laughs> Um, to to torture it, like I, I I don't understand. At what point do you think that there are currently empty graves right now, or do you think that like how do we get there? Well, Tupac's um, friend would have ceased to exist, so he doesn't exist. So he's neither in heaven nor nor in hell. Um, he has ceased to exist at this time. Okay, because uh, annihilationism. 
Okay, so. But okay, so. My, so there is no hell. Uh, right. He, the concept of hell apparently is a one-time physical event that uh... then leads to annihilationism. And honestly, like if we're talking about fairness, annihilationism is more fair than eternal torment. We still run into problems of okay, prove it exists. <laughs> but uh, okay. Uh, I guess my next question for you would be then kind of going off what you were saying about the the mind being an emergent property of the brain. And if you damage a part of the brain that um, it affects your ability to believe or to accept or to comprehend the gospel, um, that is a physical incapability on your part because your brain has been altered in some way. Um, would God still annihilate you? for that physical inability? Would that be fair? Um, I, yeah, I, I can't say um, whether that would be the, the case or not. I would say that the decision would have to be one that is fair. Perhaps the person uh, person's life would have to be taken into account before that event. Um, surely there's some fair way of resolving that. Um, I'll have to say I don't know. Okay. Um, well, we like the answer. I don't know. <laughs> we think that it's a it's a it's a hard answer to give, um, but a but a good one. Um, it seems to me, and this is just me kind of spitballing, coming from. I think we agree on a lot. I think that we agree that nothing happens to you after you die, and you do technically cease to exist. We just don't think that there's a, a, a choice or a punishment um, aspect to it. It's not like you can choose to not exist or not. I also am an annihilationist in the sense that I also think that we are purely physical beings that cease to exist after death. Um, in terms of whether or not it's fair and whether or not God is fair, if you're, if you're going to be equating, well, whatever God would decide would have to be fair, that feels a little bit unfalsifiable to me. Um, and so I definitely want to dig more into that. Unfortunately, we are four minutes away from a hard stop. And we've got announcements and everything. Yeah. yeah. So we are going to have to ask you to call back Please. or perhaps move to the Discord because we are going to be having Discord conversation after this. Mm -hmm. um, and that link should be at the bottom of the screen. That's tiny.cc slash ACA Discord. Um, but yeah, I, I want to thank you for calling in. I think that we agree on a lot. And I'm for one, very interested to continue this conversation. Uh, Definitely, it's, it's tragic. We've got you, and we've got a whole I bunch know. of callers There's that are sitting. So on, many good callers. One, two, three, four, five callers who are. Uh, yeah, this is heartbreaking, dude. Thank you for calling in, and we're so sorry that we didn't have enough time. But yeah, please, please, please call back. Yes, thank you, and I'll come on to Discord. Perfect. Sounds, Sounds good. Thank you.